In this video, we're going to jump right in and get flexing right away using the flex tool. Now this is the simplest, most basic way of applying flex editing, i.e. adjusting and manipulating the timing of discrete portions of the audio file that there is in Logic. So I'm going to play you a little bit of this vocal file first. I have a multi-track session of a song called Hurt from an indie rock band here. And I'm going to solo this little vocal phrase with the click and I want you to listen to the timing. Coming from the rain. I want it to be one and two and three, and it's a little bit sloppy as it is right now. Three, four. Coming from the rain. Starts a bit early, etc. Phrasing's a bit behind the beat. We're going to see if we can tighten it up. First thing is to select the flex tool. We can get to it as we can any tool from the regular tool menu up here. It's the last tool. And you can also assign it as your alternate tool. Or use escape followed by R. Let me go a bit higher here. Escape followed by R to get to it. So there's our flex tool. Now as I hover it over the waveform, you see the icon change depending where it's positioned. This is the main flex marker icon. You get this icon of a golf tee. It looks kind of like the top of a nail or a golf tee with two little markers on the side. That means it's located above a transient. Now you're going to hear the word transient a lot in these videos. And no, I'm not referring to homeless people who have nowhere to live. A transient is basically a peak in the waveform and it's used by Logic as a reference point to start or end applying some of the time compression expansion to or from. Now, it doesn't have to be based on a transient, but it's a reference point. So when you position it over a transient, you get this icon with the golf tee and the little two markers on the side. When it's positioned over an area with no transient, you get that kind of icon where it's a solid line, meaning there's no transient there. And of course, you'll get this in the dead spaces like that. So first thing we're gonna do is analyze the file. When you have this flex tool and you click on a file for the first time, you're going to get prompted with this dialog box where you need to choose from among several algorithms to analyze the file with, and you choose based on what type of material you have. Let's look at them briefly. You can click on this triangle to get some more information about it. Slicing mode is good for drum loops and grooves and percussion, and it's actually, uh, ironically, it doesn't really apply any actual time compression or expansion. It basically creates the transient detection grid and slices up the audio and then manipulates the timing by filling in the gaps or shrinking the gaps between the slices. We have rhythmic, which is good for polyphonic or rhythmic material that's not specifically a drum loop. And then we have monophonic, which is good for solo voices or instruments. So a single vocal line or a single guitar line or horn is perfect for this. And we have polyphonic, which is the most CPU intensive of all this, but it's also the highest quality. And this is for when there's multiple notes happening at, at a time, like a chord on a guitar or a piano. And in this case, I'm going to use monophonic since this is a solo voice that we're going to be using. And I'm going to click OK. And normally we would see a little progress bar going through the analysis stage. We're not seeing it now because I've already analyzed this file beforehand, but basically it'll analyze all the regions and files on this track and create a transient detection grid so that it's ready to have flex audio and audio editing applied to it. So now that this file is analyzed, let's start manipulating the timing by just clicking and dragging. Now I know I want this first one to fall right on the downbeat. So I have my snap mode here. I'm going to set it to division. So movement will snap to the division of the beats rather than freely, which is what I want for what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to start by just clicking and dragging and lining it up with the downbeat of bar 11. Coming from the red. And let's move the next one. I want, I want that one on the third 16th note of the beat or the second eighth note. And then the next one on the second beat. There we go. And that's the next eighth note right there. And this one, beat three. Let's hear that. Coming from the rain. So it's one and two and three. It's right on now. There's no phrasing. It may or may not sound good with the arrangement, but this is how you can manipulate the timing. Coming from the rain. And let's say I want rain to be longer. I can click at the end and lengthen it like that. Coming from the rain. A little too long. Command Z. And let's make it a bit longer. Let's try that. Coming from the rain. So there we go. That's just some basic flex editing with the flex tool. Now you're going to see a new icon here where there's a multi-pronged flex icon. This indicates the presence now of additional flex markers due to what we've created. We're not really seeing any of that now. We're just looking at the main lovely arrange window. I don't want to deal with that at this moment. We're going to look at it in the next video and lift up the hood and look and see what we've done underneath here. But for now, we've just time compressed and expanded and shifted a few of these consonants or peaks or transients of this portion of the audio file. 
So that's it for now. Just to summarize, we selected our audio file and we clicked on it with the Flex tool and had it analyze it using monophonic mode where it analyzes all the regions and files on the whole track. And that puts them in a kind of Flex ready state for editing. Then we just clicked and drag on some of the waveform peaks and drag them to line them up using the division snap mode. So that's it for now. Stay tuned. We're going to look under the hood in the next video.